Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to our reflection on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel, we're going to learn about something that's very important to being a disciple of Jesus Christ, and that is the ability to forgive someone. When someone does something wrong to us, to forgive them. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And peace be with you. I'm going to read uh, the Gospel from At Home with the Word. If you want to, you can follow along in your copy, or you can simply listen carefully. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And remember what we do here? We make the sign of the cross on our foreheads, that the Word of God might always be in our minds and on our lips that the Word of God might always be on our lips, that we might always speak the Word of God and over our hearts, that the Word of God might always be in our hearts. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother or my sister sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seven times seventy times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his, with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you the entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt so will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had somebody do something bad to you? I bet so. 
you know, I can think of a situation when I was in first grade, and we had these little books called readers. Uh, we used them to practice our reading. And one day, one of my friends, sometimes he wasn't very friendly, he took my book and he hid it. And so when it was time for our reading exercises, the teacher asked me, uh, Mark, why don't you begin the first reading? And I looked in my desk, and I couldn't find my book anywhere. And it got solved pretty quickly, because this friend uh, couldn't hold his laughter, and he started laughing. And actually, he ended up getting in a little bit of trouble for taking my book. But a lot of times, people do wrong things to us. Sometimes it's silly little things, you know, like hiding our book. But sometimes it's very serious things. And sometimes those people do those bad things more than once. Sometimes people can hurt us more than one time. In today's Gospel, Peter asked Jesus just about that kind of situation. He asked Jesus how many times we should forgive someone when they do wrong. He asks, is seven times enough? Do you remember what Jesus says? Right. Jesus tells us that we should forgive someone that does us wrong seven times, seventy times. Seven times seventy. So, if you took out your calculator and multiplied seven times seventy times, you would come up with four hundred and ninety. Do you think that Jesus is telling us that 490 is the magic number? After 490, we can just stop forgiving people? No, I think what Jesus is really trying to tell us is that we should always forgive other people. He was just using 7 times 70 as kind of a, a very large number. I bet if you ask your mom or dad how many times they've forgiven you for something that you've done wrong, they might come up with a number that's even bigger than 490. So Jesus is telling us when we forgive people 7 times 70 times that we should always forgive people, that there's an infinite number of times that we should forgive people. Now, Here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to think of someone who may have been mean to you. It might have been at school. It might have been a brother or a sister. It might be your neighbor, but just someone that has been mean to you. And maybe been mean to you a lot of times. Can you think of someone? Now, how do you feel about forgiving them every time they do something bad to you? Every single time. Take a minute and discuss that with your mom or dad. Now remember who asked the question originally? It was Peter. I wonder if Peter had somebody in mind like you do right now. Somebody that had been mean to him on many occasions. And he wanted to know how many times he could forgive them. Or he should forgive them. How do you think Peter felt about hearing 70 times 7 times? Let's take a minute and go back to the Gospel story that we heard. Jesus says that we should forgive seven times seventy times, and then he tells a story to show his point. Remember what we call those kind of stories? We call them parables. It's not something that actually happened, but he tells this story to really get the point across about forgiving someone. Let's take a look back at that story. Remember what happened? One of the king's workers owed the king a lot of money. The king was going to punish the man 
because he couldn't pay the king back. And again, it must have been an awful lot of money because the king was so angry he was going to sell the man and his family into slavery. So it must have been a lot of money that he owed. The man fell down on his knees and begged the king for mercy. Jesus tells us that the king was moved by the man's sorrow and he decided to forgive the man. He decided that the man wouldn't owe him any money. He would forgive the debt. That was a great thing for him to do, wasn't it? The story goes on to tell us that right after he had been forgiven, the servant came across another servant who owed him just a little bit of money. Now remember, the first servant had been forgiven a debt of a lot of money. Do you think he felt good about that and as a result forgave this friend of his, this other servant? No. He grabbed the man. The story tells us he started choking him and demanded his money. The man that owed him the money felt very bad and he fell on his knees and asked for forgiveness. But the first man did not forgive him. He had that man thrown in prison. Do you think that was very fair? No, it wasn't fair at all. He had just been forgiven. The other servants saw it, and they didn't think it was fair either. And so they decided to go to the king and tell what this man, who had been forgiven, did to another man who owed just a little bit of money. As you can imagine, the king was not happy about this at all. When the king heard about this, he called the man and he sent the man he had forgiven to prison. Why do you think Jesus told this story? What do you think he was trying to tell Peter, and all of us for that matter, about forgiveness? I think he was trying to tell us that as followers of Jesus, we're expected to forgive others the same way that God forgives our sins, our mistakes. We can't expect to be forgiven unless we willingly forgive other people who do wrong things to us. God is full of forgiveness and wants us to be the same. Like the king in the story, God expects us to treat others as kindly as he treats us. You know, there's a prayer that we pray all the time. It's called the Lord's Prayer, or the Our Father, that really teaches us a lot about forgiveness. There's an, a, very, a very important part of the Lord's Prayer where it says, Forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, as we forgive the sins of others. Let's spend a little time with the Lord's Prayer. We call this the Lord's Prayer because this is a prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples when the disciples asked him, how do we pray? And a lot of times uh, the saints have called this the perfect prayer because it was taught to us by Jesus. That's why every time we gather together for liturgy, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Now, most of us know the Lord's Prayer by heart because we pray it so often. Some of us that are younger are just learning it. And so we're going to sing the Lord's Prayer today. It's a really easy version of singing the Lord's Prayer because basically what you do is you repeat each phrase after me. So I'll sing a phrase and then you repeat exactly what I just said. So for example, I'll sing, I'll sing, Our Father, and then you repeat, Our Father, who art in heaven, and you repeat, who art in heaven. You get the idea. Okay, so let's try that out. And this time around, I'll sing your part very softly so that you know that you're supposed to come in. Our Father, 
our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not, and lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. That was great. You did pretty good. Now we're going to sing it one more time, and this time I'm not going to sing your parts. I want you to just belt out your parts and repeat after me. Okay, ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. That's great. God really loves it when we sing. And singing is a great way to memorize something, to, to learn it by heart. So I hope that you spend some time learning the Lord's Prayer if you don't know it. If you want to, you can listen to this video again and sing along with me and learn the Lord's Prayer by singing it. And remember that one of the most important parts and one of the most challenging parts of that prayer is that part about forgiving other people as God forgives us. And forgiveness is such an important part of being a follower of Jesus. One more thing I wanted to add before we go. Sometimes people do things that are very wrong. Just because we forgive them doesn't mean that what they do is right or that they should continue doing that. If someone ever does anything to you that you know is wrong, you should always tell your parents or some other adult so that they can help that other person stop doing what they're doing. So that's our lesson for today. Thanks for joining me, and let's end in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. In our conflicts and chaos, open our hearts. In our struggles and strong wills, open our hearts. In our pride and our passion, open our hearts. Oh, 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 wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. In all of our doubting, open our hearts. 
In all of our choosing, open our hearts. In all of our searching, open our hearts. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open, open our, our hearts. hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. When we're tired and close-minded, open our hearts. When we think we're the wiser, open our hearts. When we can't hear you calling, open our hearts. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Let your word dwell within us. Open our hearts. Let your good news inspire us. Let your gospel truth shape us. Oh, wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, be attentive. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, open our hearts. Oh, wi-